Welcome back to the RAS ACS and Behind the Knife Journal cast on landmark papers in surgery. I'm Christina Theodoro, a general surgery resident from UC Davis Medical Center, and I will be briefly reviewing the landmark STITCH trial, comparing small bites versus large bites for midline abdominal fascial closure. Incisional hernias are a common complication of abdominal surgery, occurring in 10 to 23% of patients. Hernias can be painful, disfiguring, and require additional surgical procedures to correct. Previous studies have found that running fascial closure with a semi-permanent suture, such as PDS, is associated with decreased rates of hernia formation. The STITCH trial sought to compare small bites to large bites in fascial closure. The study included patients greater than 18 years old who were undergoing elective midline laparotomies. Patients who had prior incisional hernias or abdominal surgery within three months were excluded. The study was designed as a prospective, multi-center, double-blind, randomized controlled trial in the Netherlands. The experimental arm was assigned to perform 5 mm by 5 mm fascial bites. This is defined as taking bites 5 mm from the fascial edge and traveling 5 mm between stitches, incorporating only fascial aponeuroses without any fat or muscle. The control arm was to perform 10 mm by 10 mm mass closure bites involving all layers of the abdominal wall except the skin. All fascial closures were performed in a running bidirectional fashion. Patients were followed for one year to assess the primary outcome of incisional hernia development. Quality of life surveys were also administered. 560 patients were randomized to either large 10 mm by 10 mm bites or small 5 mm by 5 mm bites. The two study groups were similar in demographics and comorbidities, including smoking status, diabetes, steroid use, prior laparotomies, and use of pre-op chemo. There were slightly more patients with COPD in the small bites group. As expected, there were differences in the fascial closure techniques. The small bites group used more stitches in total, a longer length of suture, and took on average only four more minutes to complete fascial closure than the large bites group. The rate of incisional hernias was 21% in the large bites group and 13% in the small bites group. This was a significant difference, and the patients in the small bites group had half the odds of developing an incisional hernia when compared to patients in the large bites group. Additionally, on quality of life surveys, patients with incisional hernias reported lower general health scores and more mobility problems than patients without incisional hernias at 12 months. The study has several important limitations. First, the average BMI in both groups was only 24, so we do not know if these results can be replicated in obese patients. The two arms used different needles, with a slightly thicker needle used in the large bites arm. Some of the hernias were detected on imaging alone and were not evident on physical exam. And lastly, the study only followed patients for one year, and hernias may develop after that time period. In conclusion, continuous bidirectional fascial closure with small bites defined as 5 mm from the fascial edge and 5 mm from the previous stitch reduced the rate of incisional hernias by half when compared to 10 mm by 10 mm bites. How will you close your next midline incision? I'm Christina Theodoro, a general surgery resident at UC Davis Medical Center. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach me by email or on Twitter at ctheodoromd. Thanks for listening.